I was in a not the best living situation. I had a roommate I had nothing in common with, and it was just a nightmare to find housing with these two guys. Everyone was like, you can have a dog or a cat, not both, and it was just like, that's not an option. And after years of like renting places, just weren't ideal, like whether they were cheap or that I was paying way too much money for them, or both. It was just not the lifestyle for me. So a lot of the inspiration was, I don't know where home is yet. I haven't really traveled enough or experienced enough places yet, and this is a great way to a, cut down on costs, and B, truly find where draws me in and keeps me close. Way before I had the van, because it took me six months to find this van, I had an office job at the time, and I was on my laptop all day doing 3D models on SketchUp of different layouts, different designs, different builds. So when I finally found this one, the first thing I did when I looked at it was grab measurements and then go back and tweak the existing models that I had, and it was pretty much all laid out. Accoutrements changed, but the whole basic design, the whole frame was predetermined. So the first thing I did was rip everything out. Down to the paneling, I looked behind the insulation, everything looked good, so I kept most of it. The walls probably took me a couple weeks just because I did the redwood inlay and I was doing custom cuts left and right. So there's a lot of insulation here which keeps it really cozy no matter really where I park. After the walls were done, I focused on this, I did the ceiling first, focused on the walls, and then switched to the floor. And then the bathroom came last, which was just a big, it was a little bit of engineering because I had to design the rolling toilet. I had to design the floor and put a drain in. So I moved in and a lot wasn't done. I mean, like not, not a lot of the aesthetics were done. I moved in in March and we were very much buried in snow. I built it through snowstorms regularly. So I was regularly shoveling off snow of the roof. It took me like two hours before I could even start work because you had to dig it out. So definitely started enjoying the perks pretty immediately. The cost is one thing, but I think the freedom was probably the biggest motivator for sure. So hi, my name is Nate. This is my home on wheels, Shevanigans. It's a converted box truck. It's an 1989 Ford E350. There's a couple inch lift kit, I'm not quite sure. Uh, there's a four wheel drive conversion. She's only got less than 33,000 miles on her, so quite the relic that I found. I bought it from a guy in Auburn. The previous owner had used it as like a cabin. They like parked it on a property and would go there for a couple days and then leave, but the van never moved. I got it for a 9250 and I was looking aggressively for six months and this one finally worked out, which was awesome. I got lucky with this. As far as outside modifications, the winch is new. It's a 9,000 pound winch from Harbor Freight. It's cheap. It's one I had off my F-150 or the previous truck. I might upgrade it eventually, but for now it works. So this is my fresh water tank. It's 46 gallons of water, which is plenty for like two to three weeks, depending on showers in the van. Um, these are milk crates for the outdoor shower on the other side. It's a little portable platform. Um, and then this is just another little toolbox for storage. Um, it's just got fluids and stuff in it right now. This is a much bigger toolbox. It's got a couple saws in there, air hoses, extension cords, jumper cables, a little bit of everything. So a couple level of saw horses for building. This is a hammock chair that rolls down when the weather allows. One toolbox here. This is Monty, <laughs> he's a little scared. All the climbing gear is right on the door, keeps it accessible and simple. And then this is the main toolbox, which is just a truck toolbox that I've switched, flipped vertically. I also got it from my old truck. And then I shelved it out with an old sunscreen stand from Rite Aid. So as you can see, plenty of tape, tools, saw blades, air compressor on the bottom, all the tools I would need to build pretty much anything. On top of that is a generator that I just pulled off an old RV. It's all propane. I haven't quite wired it up yet. I'm like a couple hours away from finishing that up, but that's the newest addition, which I'm really excited about. Under here is my bike. Just trying to protect it from the weather a little bit. And then on this side, there's two outdoor chairs. There's my backup propane tank, because there's a main 100 pound tank right under here. That's the fill hole. Um, this is an outdoor shower. So this comes down, I can pull it down real quick. That comes down and it's four by three. It's full of water because it's been raining. Um, and then these curtains go all the way around. So it's nice privacy in the summer. This is an extra toolbox that's just like brake fluid, extra oil and everything, nothing special in there. This is my gray water tank, which is just 
um, it collects water from the shower and the sink. And all I use is Dr. Bronner's biodegradable soap and products. So it's not really, I, I can pretty much dump in most places that are eco-friendly. On top, there's a 325 watt solar panel behind that, which is plenty of power. I was eventually thinking about adding more, but it's been great so far. She just got a new set of wheels. I just put the Hurricane all-terrain wheels that the same as the Truckee uh, PUD uses, which is really aggressive and really nice. So welcome to the inside of my home. I really love the coziness of the space. It's all wood, which keeps it really warm, both aesthetically and insulated. I've had dinner parties of five people in here. I cook most of my meals in here with full kitchen, full bath, which obviously makes things a little more convenient. So I designed it. I did everything on a 3D model before I moved in, so tried a bunch of different styles and layouts, and this one fit the best for me and the space that I was moving into. Storage-wise in here, I have like a ton of storage. Like This is all a gear drawer. Um, just luggage, but backpacks, book bags, um, picnic blankets. These two, these two top drawers are closed. Underwear, shorts, socks. The drawers are sliding out because we're on a hill. But <laughs> um, this is just all t-shirts, uh, foam rollers, sweatpants. And then on this bottom one, we have pet food, towels, running vest, a little couple more out gear, outdoor gear. My ski stuff is underneath there as well. So definitely everything I need and then some, but yeah, the drawers are definitely packed to the gills. Um, Monty's litter box is down here. It never really smells. I obviously change it frequently. Um, behind here is some overflow Tupperware that I still need to get rid of. There's um, just some nails and like a bunch of miscellaneous hardware behind there, laundry detergent. This is for climbing, uh, it's a training tool. Um, you can do pull-ups from it. Each one of these is different size for your fingers. So like these are four finger pockets, two finger pockets, three. These are sh shallower versions of the same thing. Um, and it basically just helps with finger strength, which is paramount for climbing. This is a light. So it's just like I painted a mason jar. I wanted to keep it. I didn't want to shy, um, blind you when you walk in, but need some light when you walk through the door, obviously, so you're not stumbling around in the dark. So this is the bathroom. It's cozy. Um, obviously, this is my toilet. It's a compost toilet that I designed myself um, after the nature size models. I just thought paying $1,000 for a toilet was a little steep. So I just um, basically designed the same thing with a Rubbermaid bin. This is the auger crank that after you use the restroom, you turn it. After you go number two, um, there's a urine diverter in the front that I just literally cut a bowl in half and made a homemade urine diverter from that. Um, there's two shower heads, one handheld and one normal one. Handheld really helps if meatball gets dirty or one of the pets get dirty or you want to clean something off quick. It's all redwood sealed with linseed oil, so redwood is really resistant to moisture in general and then the oil just kind of helps with that as well. And then I hit it all with a waterproof coating as well designed for decks. So the wood's really um, resilient to water and good to go. The light switch is hidden right behind the door here, so it's on a dimmer switch so you can go as bright or as dark as you want which really helps at two in the morning when you want to go to the bathroom and don't want to get blinded. Um, and then when you want to shower, the toilet rolls right out under the kitchen sink and really opens up the space for a shower and then keeps the toilet from getting soaked as well. This is the water heater. That's a tankless water heater. Just gets vented through the roof, may get sheath eventually one day, but for right now, very functional. Um, and on-demand water forever, which is really nice. Um, this is a barn door that I made, and I tried to buy real barn door hardware, but it was like 12, 14 inches tall, and it was not gonna work at all for a space like this. So I found out that like pretty much everything else in here had to make something custom. So I went with a garage door, a track with garage door wheels, and just painted it with a hammered copper. Keep it nice, but it rolls really nice. So it's a bunch of layers of epoxy, and one of them I did a little hazy, so it's still like got that privacy bathroom window effect, but you can still see the design, but th all the way through it's a little hazy, which gives you some privacy. Not that there's much in 86 square feet, but every little bit helps. I do have these two pieces of wood that I just haven't got around to sanding down and trimming it out, but eventually that'll disappear. We're gonna have legs down here, and it'll look like a normal window trimmed out, and all you'll see is the center. So this is living room main area. Not that I really have more rooms. The bathroom is the only really extra room in here. Kitchen is to my right. So the countertop is a live edge black walnut countertop. So I bought this as a raw slab. Um, it was obviously a little bigger and then I cut it to fit the space. It's two inches thick. It's locally sourced from a guy in Truckee um, who 
goes up to Oregon every year and they, uh, he gets a bunch of slabs. He's an old wood woodworker. So I got lucky with finding this, which is, I always wanted the live edge countertop just because I feel like it adds a little character to the space. And it's obviously a nice countertop as well. So when I bought it, it was really raw. I sanded it for probably two days straight and then sealed it with um, epoxy. So it's pretty bulletproof there. Right here, we have a mason jar that I've just bought a top for. This is a uh, Dr. Bronner soap. It keeps it biodegradable. I use it for everything. Um, hammered copper sink. Um, there's the two sink fa or two faucets rather. This one is just a dump valve for filling water bottles, washing your hands, etc. This one's a lot better for dishes, obviously, as a spray valve. Burr grinder for coffee every morning because fresh ground coffee is the only way to go. This would be the paper towels, and then the rack I just made from dowel rod, and it just rotates. Keeps it has kept it simple and looks nice. This is the inverter switch. This is a battery monitor that I no longer use. This is um, com basically a computer desk as well. I put watch stuff on my laptop, and then obviously all the dishes are done right here. This is my heater right here, which is a 240 square foot heater. And like I said, we're in 86 square feet, so this thing really cranks. I can gain like 10 degrees every um, hour. And as far as efficiency, it's usually on low, which is really great. And down here, I opted for uh, curtains rather than doors, just because opening doors in here kind of makes it really claustrophobic. And a lot of times, I wouldn't necessarily be able to open the doors. So I just went with curtains. This is a picture of uh, Zion National Park, and it kind of brightens the space up a little bit. So under here is pretty much empty because I had to keep it empty so the toilet can roll underneath for when I shower. Obviously, the garbage is here. There's some cleaning supplies back here. Um, this you can see is my inverter. So it's a 4,000 watt inverter. And the reason I needed such a big one is for the air conditioner. Anything, I had a 2,000 watt one that came with the van and I ended up having to upgrade it just because I needed more power. But really it's just for the uh, inverter and the air compressor as well. Um, under here I have four Trojan uh, T105 plus batteries, which are four big deep cycle batteries de designed for golf carts. And they really give me a lot of um, versatility off grid. This is my water pump. This one is the LED strip, the main one. And then I also have another LED strip. This one's just on off white. And I have another one that I can control Bluetooth from my phone that I can dim. Uh, it's RGB, so it can be any color, which is really, I like light green at night just because it's not as abrasive and it's a lot easier to fall asleep to. This is a drawer full of, this is liquor cabinet, storage, a little bit of everything. Um, this is all the liquors behind there, protected tight. There's a bungee cord across the back. Right now, this is kind of, this is a bag of my corks to finish up. This is just kind of overflow cabinet at the moment, but it's a nice big drawer that helps out with storage for sure. So this is a Camp Chef stove, two burners. I keep uh, my saute pan back here. There's also a strainer back here. It needed clearance behind it and it's a good place for storage. It's kind of out of sight, out of mind. Um, but I cook most of my meals. There's two burners, full oven as well. This thing is like less than $200 on Amazon and they design it to bring camping. They don't want you to run it inside at all, which is, I don't know why. I know countless people who use the same exact model with zero clearance on the side and never had any issues. So I think it just must be their attorney saying they didn't quite get that approval, but I've been running it for a year and I know multiple people have been running it just as long, if not longer. So there's a light under here, which obviously helps at night to cook. Um, there's a vent under, or a vent fan under here, which exhausts out the side. We showed you where the vent is on the other side. And then it just kind of hides there. Um, the side is just the old um, vent hood sleeve that I painted hammered copper again. The cabinets are, um, the base is made with reclaimed pallets. So they're all sanded, oiled, and reclaimed in here. Um, you can see foods on top, dishes are on the bottom. And then I went with these really solid drawer, um, door stays. They're a lot better than the traditional ones that are just kind of pinching. These ones are solid brass and they're bullet, pretty bulletproof. Um, plates up here to kind of maximize every, like we keep saying, every inch counts in here. So I have plenty of food, um, plenty of cooking utensils. All the ticket, these are all ticket stubs from various shows I've been to over the past decade and a half. Um, just kind of nice way to brighten up the space. Always value experiences over possessions anyway, so kind of want to highlight that a little more every way I can. And this is always nice to just look at the doors and um, look back at memories because every one of these is significant for sure.
This is just a sticker. I was going to do um, wood this similar, and then I found the sticker for 15 bucks, and it's less weight and looks just as good. So, um, full size fridge, which is super nice. Plenty of space, all the condiments I could need. That's my, that was my one gripe with like the smaller fridges similar to this size is you really can't have any condiments. You could have like one. And if you cook a lot or eat a lot at home, it just kind of like obviously flavors everything. Um, up here is just like a little paracord sunglass holder I made. Keeps it simple, keeps them out of the way as well. This is a bamboo purse that I repurposed as my produce holder. Thought it looked a little nicer than the typical fruit hammocks that people use. This is the air conditioner that we talked about outside. It's plenty big. I think it's rated for like 300 square feet. So it's a Dometic 13 and a half um, thousand BTU one. It's basically the smallest one they make. So I, was, <laughs> I would have liked the smaller one, but those are my options. Um, this is the slide through door. So at night, close the door off, keeps it private. So up here is um, some slack line, tree protectors. This is a box of business cards. This is a blender, dog treats. Um, over here, we have up here is more treats. This is all dog stuff. So there's a life jacket in there, lunch or um, cooler for beers when I'm going, toys. And then this side is um, soldering iron, voltometer, um, guide. This is all guidebooks and my other books as well. Um, overflow toiletries. I have first aid kit for the pets for myself. So this is a futon that came with the van originally. Um, there was bunk beds in here. Um, and I ended up taking the futon frame out. The frame became my awning that we saw in the back. And then this is just, um, I made the bed, the bed frame from Reclaim Pallets as well. It's hard to see. Under here is a yoga mat, tripods, hiking poles. Um, there's a couple storage cases as well under there. I decided not to do drawers because with drawers you lose a half inch to an inch on each side. So the bed is, uh, has three legs in the front and then the back is on casters. It's two pieces so the one slides into each other. And then to pull it out, super simple. Um, that's fully 90 for the futon. It's got like four different positions. And then they go down, it just drops flat. Uh, right now all my sheets and Pillows are on the um, driver's seat, which is where they usually are if I'm in here, because it just keeps them out of the way. And obviously, when I'm driving, it goes right on the bed. Um, the walls behind this are also redwood. I opted for no stain. I just went with, um, I burned them and then brushed them off, which is a Japanese wood working technique, and just makes them nice. But all redwood inlays. This is uh, Monty's little nook. He's the cat, obviously. This is his food bowl. I put it up here because Meatball kept eating all of his food, so. It used to be like I would need a good excuse to go outside. Now it's just like everywhere is my living room. Now we're on different mountaintops. Woke up next to Donner Lake, Lake Tahoe. It gives me a lot of freedom. Like I live the lifestyle I want to. Um, bills are way lower. My bills went down like almost two grand a month, which is huge. So that gives me a lot more money to, to focus on the things that I actually want. I don't spend 60% of my take home on necessities anymore. Slimming down is very liberating, like everything I have now fits into 86 square feet. And that being said, I still have more stuff than most of my friends. After you include like tools, gear, like clothes even, like I don't have to work five days a week. Now, the struggle is absolutely gone. So this actually blossomed into a company do, creating bespoke tiny homes, van conversions, RV remodels. I was, as I was posting the build progress on social media, a bunch of people just started inquiring and like, I would love for you to make me something. And that sparked the idea that like, I could do this. Cause I really enjoy tiny spaces. I really enjoy cultivating spaces and creating spaces tailored to people. And as someone who's lived in a tiny home for a year, I have a really good idea of space cons conservation. Like the house I built before this was only 400 square feet. So I've been living smaller than most for going on six years. So even if someone's not ready to like dive in full time, whether they have kids, whether they have this, I think a lot of people would benefit from having an escape vehicle. You meet a lot more people, you meet a lot of like-minded people. It's definitely, if you're into the outdoors at all, highly recommended. Let me just close these up real quick. No, I just don't usually park on hills. <laughs> you're good. Everyone was like, you can have a dog or a cat, not both. And it was just like, that's not an option. And after years of like renting places, um, Meats, come here. 
Get out of the way. That's not a toy. Don't have to worry about like wires inside the walls or anything like that, which was a nice touch or a big help rather. I didn't have to rip out any walls. Asshole, where are you going? Bye.